So today I'm going to be taking out the Fuji X-T4 uh, for a spin. I'm going to take a few uh, sample photos uh, in RAW format and I'm going to share them with you so you can try them out in your favorite uh, photo editing software and see how they look and whether you like them. I had a couple of requests in uh, comments from previous videos to provide uh, some example shots that people could try out. So stick around in the video and uh, let me show you the photos that I take and how you can get the, the raw files. Let's go. So I'm going to edit these three photos here in Capture One. This is the Fujifilm edition. So let's start with uh, this one over here. I'm going to play with uh, the dynamic range. So for example, I can lift the black point, lift the highlights, and I'm going to lift the shadows as well. And that has quite a drastic effect. One thing to be aware of is that Capture One actually applies some sharpening by default. If we zoom in, we can see that. I'm going to remove the sharpening now. And it's not a huge amount, but I'd rather have it just without any, any sharpening. I mean, the image is in focus. I'm happy with the image quality. And we have a before and after. The nice thing about uh, Capture One is that you have uh, the Fujifilm film simulations built in and they're all available in this drop down as well as a couple of extra ones that Capture One themselves provide. Now this is a Capture One specific one as is this one. This one is also from Capture One. So Acros, which is black and white. It's green filter and red filter and uh, I believe yellow filter. And then we have Astia, classic chrome, which I really like. I just love the way that the skies come out. Classic negative, Eterna, Eterna bleach bypass, uh, just monochrome. Uh, Pro Neg High and standard. Provia, which is actually the, the default and sepia. And then there's also uh, Velvia. Let's not forget Velvia and this linear response one, which is from Capture One themselves. I think probably my favorite one is uh, Classic Chrome out of all these. Let's take a look now at a nighttime picture that I shot recently. You can see that this was shot at f2.8 and the ISO is fairly high. With this photo, these highlights here are pretty strong. Yeah, this will show the areas that are blown out, basically. So I'm gonna go over here to high dynamic range in uh, this section over here, the exposure section. And I'm going to reduce the white point a little bit. So I'm gonna balance it also by bringing down the highlights just a tad. At the same time, I'm going to increase the black point. And then I'll also do the same with the shadows. You can see now the before and after. So we have a more balanced look. And now let's have a look at, you know, the film simulations. And Let's head over now to this uh, shot, which is of downtown Madrid. Let's get started. Let's see what we want to do here. So first of all, it's shot at f2. You can see some, uh, maybe some vignetting uh, around the corners here. So I think that's the first order of business to fix. Pretty sure I, I do it in this exposure section here. Yep, vignetting. So actually, if I increase the amount, there we go. We can see that it's uh, compensating for the vignetting just a little bit more. I don't want to go overboard, but this, this does take care of it quite decisively. The next thing I want to do is that this area down below here is quite dark and this is quite light. So let's go and have a look at the exposure. Okay, so I'm going to increase the black point 
just a bit. And you can see that that has helped in the, these areas here at the bottom. I'm going to bring up the shadows as well. About that much. And that now gives us a very balanced look. We have... Uh, we don't have any dis distracting uh, darkness down here. Now, at the same time, I want to kind of uh, rein in the sky a little bit. I am going to bring down the white point. Just a tad. Yeah, this much. And then I'm going to bring down the highlights. You can see that really brought back some cloud texture here. Um, let's do a before and after so you can see. Okay, so... That was before. And after. Really bringing out these buildings down here without losing, um, you know, the, the detail here in the sky. So I'm very happy with that. Now, what I can also do is increase the saturation a bit. So now that's a very colorful and vibrant image. Um, and now we can try out some some looks and uh, film simulations. So yeah, this is pretty much how I edit on Capture One. Uh, some of the main features that I use, there are others, but these are the ones that I use uh, most regularly. Next, I'm going to also show you an alternative way of editing uh, Fuji RAW files, and that is using uh, the Fuji X-RAW Studio, which is actually a graphical interface on the computer to drive the RAW processing engine on the actual X-T4. Okay. So here we have a picture that I shot with the Fuji X-T4 with a 23mm uh, f2 lens. Of course, I shot this in Provia, so the standard profile. The XRAW Studio is just uh, some software to make it more convenient to process RAWs using the in-camera tools. Let's see, I think I can probably push the exposure just a little bit. So with this push-pull process, I'm going to increase it. Let's see. It's a bit much, probably just by a third here. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. These trees are pretty dark here in the foreground, so I kind of want to see if we can recover some detail. Uh, the control that I'm going to use is uh, Shadow Tone, and by going into negative values, if I just hover on this um, drop-down menu, you can actually see the effect. You can see here, minus two. Now I can see some green, you can see some detail. We can even zoom in and kind of get an idea of the, of the detail. I mean, that's, you know, that's without any sharpening or anything. That's, you know, <laughs> on a 23 millimeter lens, it's managed to retain a decent amount of detail. Uh, the other thing that you can do actually is if we reset everything, you have these custom camera profiles, which can actually be used to kind of create custom looks. And there we go, I've loaded one in, Acfa Vista 100. So these are actually from uh, Fuji X Weekly. It's a blog. Uh, there are basically film recipes. So uh, settings, custom settings that emulate the look of certain films. There's not a whole amount of leeway in the controls here, but if you just want to make small adjustments and retain the highest quality, x Studio is a, is a great place to do that. And then, of course, you can also uh, use your standard film simulations that Fujifilm provides. You've got Velvia, which, of course, punches up the color and the contrast. Astia Soft. Um, that's quite nice. Classic Chrome. It's a favorite of mine, and I think of many Fuji shooters. Proneg High and Standard. Uh, which gives a very balanced look, actually. Classic Neg, another favorite of mine. Very uh, distinctive look. Turner Cinema, Turner Bleach Bypass, which kind of drains out the color. And then uh, we've got Acros, which is Fuji's black and white film simulation. And uh, I'll compare it with Monochrome here directly. 
because that's a more standard, just black and white. And you can see that across is uh, the the shadows are a bit more punchy, has a bit a bit more contrast. And then you have some um, some filter options based by color. So I think my favorite one is the uh, the red uh, the red filter here brings out the sky very nicely. And the same here with uh, monochrome now. Yeah, again, the red is a strong contender there for me. If I were to process this image in black and white. And then finally, sepia. And there you are. That's uh, pretty much a little quick whistle stop tour of XRAW Studio. Okay, so now it's uh, your turn. And uh, you can get these raw files by having a look at the show notes below the video or the pinned comment that will accompany this video with a link to download the, the raw files so that you can experiment and edit them your way. And I'd love to hear what you think of, of the files and any of your own tips and tricks that you have when editing these sorts of images.